So, here we are. It's Christmas. Happy Christmas. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I said that I was going to do a top ten list of alternative Christmas movies. We've discussed films like Gremlins quite a lot here on the blog, and I know that everyone who has a slightly darker attitude towards Christmas loves Gremlins. Here is my list of the top ten alternative Christmas movie favourites. At number ten, and it pains me to say this, Jingle All The Way. See, here's the thing with Jingle All The Way. I hate that film. I genuinely hate it. It's an Arnold Schwarzenegger film that I consider to be a crassly consumerist movie about the crass consumerism of Christmas. And yet, in the last year, I've had not one, not two, but three people defend that movie on the following basis. It's just like Paul Verhoeven's Showgirls. People hated that film because it seemed to be a disgusting celebration of something it was actually criticising. Well, jingle all the way, in the minds of these three people whose opinions I respect, is in fact a sly undercutting of the Christmas consumerist myth. I don't buy it, but you know what? I'm open-minded. It's in at number 10. At number 9, Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, aka Santa Claus v the Martians, aka Santa Claus Defeats the Aliens, any other variant on that that you want. Now, a number of reasons for including this film. None of those reasons are that it's any good. It isn't. It's one of those allegedly cult movies from the 1960s. I mean, cult film fans love to tell you that it's crazy and zany and enjoyable. It, it's really not that good at all. But, on the one hand, its story clearly influenced Nightmare Before Christmas, the Tim Burton produced film, because the story is that the Martians come down to Earth to kidnap Father Christmas. I think you can see that echoed in Nightmare Before Christmas. More importantly, it's one of a number of cult film titles mentioned in a song, Stranger Than Fiction, by the band Destroy All Monsters, whose lead singer was Tim Polecat. For a long time, the video for this has been up on YouTube, it's made in the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s. There's been a lot of discussion on YouTube about whether or not the guy skateboarding and playing guitar is me. It isn't, but I wish it was. Now, at number eight, to demonstrate just how far I'm stretching the rules on what constitutes a Christmas movie, The French Connection. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. The French Connection is not a Christmas movie. It's a film about the most infamous drugs bust in recent American history. It's an action thriller known for its extraordinary sequence in which a car chases an L train. But if you're a fan of French Connection, and I am, you'll remember that at the very beginning of the film, we see Gene Hackman on a stakeout disguised as what? That's right, disguised as Father Christmas. Gene Hackman, in The French Connection, is introduced to us as a yo-ho-hoing Father Christmas. You still picking your feet in Poughkeepsie? At number seven in my list of top ten alternative Christmas movies, Black Christmas. And I'm referring here to the Bob Clark original, although we should mention the remake, if only because the remake had on it one of my favourite critic's quotes of all time. Last Christmas you gave me your heart, this Christmas, I want your eyeballs. On to number six, and one of the more recent entries in this chart, Rare Exports. I know loads of you will have seen this film. It came out last year in the cinema. I think it's just come out recently on DVD. It's one of those really strange Finnish movies that takes a myth you think you know and turns it upside down. The story is allegedly the real story of Santa Claus, in which the Father Christmas figure is, shall we say, not a benevolent, jolly, white-bearded figure, but something closer to a strange, evil, rather threatening troll. If you haven't seen Rare Exports, I don't want to tell you any more because I don't want to spoil the plot for you, but it is one of those Christmas movies that makes you think, yeah, that might be real. Into the top five now, and at number five, Monty Python's The Meaning of Life. Now, I know most people don't think it's the Python's finest work, it's not as funny as Holy Grail or as consistent as Life of Brian, but it does feature in it a very strange song and dance number called Christmas in Heaven, and perhaps more importantly, you know, Christmas is a time of overeating. Christmas is a time of overindulgence. Christmas is a time when you kind of wake up in the morning and think, oh, I kind of overdid that. Well, what better time than to sit down and enjoy the splendour that is Mr. Creosote? After all, sir, it is only wafer thin. Now, at number four, and on a rather more serious note, the most recent entry into this alternative top ten Christmas movies. This is a film, actually, which may well still be playing in a cinema near you. Carol Morley's Dreams of a Life, which turned out to be one of the most unexpected movies of 2011. It's a very, very well-judged docudrama, a documentary with dramatic interludes, retelling the appalling story of Joyce Vincent, who apparently died alone in her flat whilst wrapping Christmas presents and wasn't found for three years. 
it's a very interesting dissection of the alienation and fragmentation of modern society, a film that reminds us that at this time of bonhomie and jollity, that there is real loneliness in the modern world, and a film which deals with a very, very difficult issue in a way which is seasonal, which is topical, which is sensitive, and is profoundly moving. At number three, and it really wouldn't be a Christmas top ten without Bill Forsyth's Comfort and Joy. Nothing like the massive international hit The Local Hero was, but every bit as wonderful in its own way. Bill Patterson plays a character who in so many ways is isolated and lonely already. At the beginning of the film, around Christmas time, he finds himself abandoned by the love of his life and is then led into a very strange battle between warring ice cream vans. It's such a strange movie. It's such a moving film. It's got terrific performances. It finds Bill Forsyth doing the bittersweet thing that he does absolutely to perfection. And again, it's one of those films that you can see it every Christmas, like It's a Wonderful Life, and every time you see it, there's something else there that you didn't notice before. It has, at its heart, a really, really warm, affectionate spirit, and yet, like the Frosty Hots which he invents, it's kind of cold and warm at the same time. At number two, a film that demonstrates that there really is no such thing as a template for a classic Christmas movie. What I want, come Christmas, is guys running round tower blocks in increasingly dirty vests shouting yippee ki -yay, melon farmer. Yes, in at number two, John McTiernan's Die Hard. Cowboys and Indians meets the towering inferno, but with a seasonal setting. All of which brings us to the top of the charts, the number one spot, my favourite alternative Christmas film. I'm talking, of course, about Terry Gilliam's Brazil. Now, I know that people don't immediately think of Brazil as a Christmas film, but the Father Christmas theme runs all the way through the movie. The gifts, something for the executive, that run through the film. Think of the opening moments when a young boy wonders, how is Father Christmas going to get into our house if we don't have a chimney, only to find the special forces crashing through a circular hole in the ceiling, to the very end when... Well, in case you haven't seen Brazil, and that is possible, don't let me give it away. Let me just say that it's recently been reissued on DVD. If you've never seen it, you need to catch up with it. If you have seen it, it should be there on a double bill with It's a Wonderful Life, the light and the dark. In fact, the light and the dark in both films. It's a Wonderful Life, Brazil. Have a happy Christmas. <laughs>